We're thankful to 10 and Kaleidoscope for sponsoring this season. The Greatest Hero by Joanna Kimball is a Kaleidoscope title that brings Romans to life for our kids. Joanna understands kids, understands the gospel, and understands Paul, and in this book brings us a whole lot of good news as she helps our primary school age kids see that Jesus is the hero who comes to save us, the baddies, from the dreadful reality of sin. Her tone is spot on, the language is just right, and she's adept at going deep without being intense. I'm looking forward to reading this with my son. Grab a copy at tenofthose.com. Welcome to Two Sisters and a Cup of Tea. My name is Sarah, I live in the UK. This is my sister Felicity, she lives in the States, and today we are getting into Deuteronomy chapters 12 to 18. But before that, Felicity, I'll tell you what, I've been inspired by Nancy and I went to peruse the uh, the Twinings selection in Sainsbury's this week and um, I'm drinking a very good blood orange and cranberry tea today. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you know the first word that came out of your mouth, I did not expect it to be blood. Mm. <laughs> I know, and it's very red. It's very <laughs> blood-like. <laughs> <laughs> wow well uh, we'll have to tell nancy she's inspiring our uh, our tea drinking habits that's brilliant yeah, so it's worth good. it interesting good. yeah I'm, yeah i'm surprised actually how good it is but i think what i've learned through this um well how long have, how long have we been going a couple of years over um it's worth buying the brands isn't it it's yes. worth going for twinings <laughs> even when everything in me says oh but there's one cheaper um yeah think... i've gone i've gone for i've that's gone for true. that um, what struck you most from our conversation with her the other day? I have just been, it's been going through my head and my heart this last few days. So mm. much like that last mm. thing that she was saying that, that from the safety of being in Christ, like as we, we look at the law, we look at Deuteronomy and we see, we see that we can't. And mm. so we love that Jesus can and does. And from being in him, we then come back to Deuteronomy and the law and we're just in a safe spot to then allow God's word to really search out our hearts to really kind of go to work and help us to live that more Jesus-like life that's just been the way she articulated that the union with Christ was is key there isn't it actually being in Christ being completely safe in him means that we can afford to delve into our own idolatry and sin and root it out and yeah it's really good isn't it that's it's the same as me I've been really mulling on that and I think it's really helpful as we come to this next chunk which we're kind of getting into more of the law that Moses kind of talks about aren't we in these next um, few chapters and I think it's just really I mean, it's been really great having her come on isn't it because it's really helps shape Oh, well, yeah. that was that was the plan, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> good one. I'm glad we got Nancy on. We, we've yeah. known all along that we need help. And that, that, was a, that was a good word from Nancy. Um, and I think yeah. I think as well, what I've realised is that as we've been in Deuteronomy for 11 chapters now, that as I now, having kind of dug a bit deeper into those first 11 chapters, this chunk, which is the one that has been intimidating, mm. um, it still is, it still is. Let's be honest, but. Chapters 12 through 26 are this kind of law section. But having been in the first 11 chapters in a bit more depth, that then is really changing the way that I read um, this now. And that's just been helpful, (laughs) which makes sense, doesn't it? The more we're in it, the more it begins to make sense. So, Okay, so we're going to get stuck into it today. We're not doing 12 to 26 today, you'll be glad to hear. 12 to 18, it's still still a sizable chunk. Um, But we're we're going to read three different parts from that chunk. Before we do that, we're just going to summarise what what the chapters are saying. So, shall I shall I have a go? Go for it, we're, Sarah. We're all stopped. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Chapter twelve. He's talking about the right place to worship and worshiping the Lord rightly. Um, and then in chapter 13, we get the dangers of being enticed away from the Lord and the kind of deliberate malice that comes with enticing someone away from worshiping the Lord. We've then got laws about food and giving and uh there's some clothing in there somewhere maybe not and we've got laws about uh, slaves we've got animals and then we've got this kind of couple of chapters 16 17 and 18 we've got um just yeah laws about the passover about judges about a king 
about worshipping other gods again. We've got prophet. We've got this kind of, it's quite a broad and general catch-all, isn't it, for how Mm. to worship the Lord and remembering the Lord in all that you do. So, yeah, that's my take on it. And let's (laughs) read it. Yes, let's. So first chunk, we're going to read chapter 12, verses 1 to 7. These are the decrees and laws you must be careful to follow in the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has given you to possess as long as you live in the land. Destroy completely all the places on the high mountains, on the hills and under every spreading tree where the nations you are dispossessing worship their gods. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones and burn their Asherah poles in the fire. Cut down the idols of their gods and wipe out their names from those places. You must not worship the Lord your God in their way. But you are to seek the place the Lord your God will choose from among all your tribes to put his name there for his dwelling. To that place you must go. There bring your burnt offerings and sacrifices, your tithes and special gifts, what you have vowed to give and your free will offerings and the firstborn of your herds and flocks. There, in the presence of the Lord your God, you and your family shall eat and shall rejoice in everything you've put your hand to, because the Lord your God has blessed you. Okay, the next chunk, 14 verses 1 to 8. You are the children of the Lord your God. Do not cut yourselves or shave the front of your heads for the dead, for you are a people holy to the Lord your God. Out of all the peoples on the face of the earth, the Lord has chosen you to be his treasure's possession. Do not eat any detestable things. These are the animals you may eat. The ox, the sheep, the goat, the deer, the gazelle, the roe deer, the wild goat, the ibex, the antelope and the mountain sheep. You may eat any animal that has divided hoof and that chews the cud. However, Of those that chew the cud or that have a divided hoof, you may not eat the camel, the hare or the hyrax. Although they chew the cud, they do not have a divided hoof. They are ceremonially unclean for you. The pig is also unclean. Although it has a divided hoof, it does not chew the cud. You are not to eat their meat or touch their carcasses. And then we're going to read chapter 18, verses 9 through to 20. When you enter the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord because of these same detestable practices. The Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. The nations you will dispossess listen to those who practice sorcery or divination. But as for you, the Lord your God has not permitted you to do so. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him, for this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, let us not hear the voice of the Lord your God, nor see this great fire any more, or we will die. The Lord said to me, what they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites, and I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell them everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words that the prophet speaks in my name. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my name, anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. Thank you, Felicity. So I think on the face of it, it can feel quite random that we've chosen those three passages. Um, But, and we're not wanting to just cherry pick passages, are we? We're wanting to get the whole kind of um, thrust of this whole section And I think if we had one word for it, it would be worship, wouldn't it? Yes, absolutely. And I think it's helpful to notice that we are doing just half of the law section today. But if you were Mm -hmm. to get to the end of chapter 26, then you'd you'd hear worship as well. So this whole law section is kind of bookended by worship. And that is that's just been really fundamental to understanding anything that's going on here, hasn't it? In, In the sense that our view of God and how we worship God, the desire to worship him, the right way of doing that, then that then overflows into this horizontal, more more horizontal law keeping, like the way in which we are with one yeah. another yeah, is connected to the way we are with, with God. Yeah. And I think probably what this first chunk of the law, so 12 to 18, seems a bit more vertical kind of in how to relate to God and how to worship to God. How to worship to God? How to worship God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, when we get into the next section, it's much more horizontal. And so loving God and loving neighbor, it kind of feels like you could kind of split it um, yes. down that way a little bit. Um, I think what's really struck me is that, that there is a right way to worship God. He's very specific in how you should worship him, what the right way is. And there is a really, really dangerous 
situation at play if you choose to walk away from that if you choose to entice someone away from worshiping the lord um and if you choose to walk in the way that the other nations particularly the um the canaanites are doing the word detestable comes up a lot that's really interesting um i think in terms of where we see it crop up and it always seems to be in relation to the other nations kind of worship practices mm-hmm. um so yeah that's what struck me how about you yeah. Well, and that, and that's a really helpful kind of way to just because the way in which the other nations are regarded and and dealt with it is is something of a thing throughout Deuteronomy, and so it's really helpful mm. to see that in relation to worship. And and this idea, the word ensnaring, comes up quite a lot as well. Mm, that kind of yeah. this idea that you could be ensnared by other gods, and and even just don't worship your god like they worship their gods. Like there's a yeah. very distinct way in which to live out this life as the exodus people as the people who have been rescued and it comes back to that same thing doesn't it again and again like the identity who you are as rescued people mm. then means that that determines how you view god how you worship god and therefore how you live and i, I think it's helpful just to see that the worship so in chapter 13 you get this uh, coming back round to the lord your god and um, love him with all your heart and all which, your soul which chapter 13 chapter 13 verse 3 um, and it, he says, love, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And then verse four, he says, it is the Lord your God you must follow and him you must revere, keep his commands and obey him, serve him and hold fast to him. And that's the same thing we've been hearing all the way through this idea mm-hmm. that the, it's a heart level worship and love for the Lord. And, and out of that then comes obedience and this holding fast, which, which obedience and, and keeping the Lord seems to be all a part of holding fast. Yeah, and it's and it's what the Lord is doing to them, isn't it? He is holding fast to them. He is kind of tethered himself to them through no righteousness of their own, as we've seen so far through Deuteronomy. Um, and I love the beginning of chapter 14 starts again with just reminding them, you're my treasured possession. I've chosen you out of all the peoples on the face of the earth. Like, this is who you are. And so live distinctively. And I think the law is about clean and unclean food are there to show them that actually you live distinctively in comparison to the surrounding nations. You live this way as a way to show that you are my treasured possession. You are people holy to the Lord. Yes, we might not understand all the specifics here, but I think the kind of the thread of the the tone of it is is really helpful when it's got the bookends of this is who you are. Yes. And and this is who you are. And that distinctiveness floods into every part of your life so i so i think the food stuff is like we don't really get it but what we do see i think is that even our diet and even yeah. our money and even you know the way just everything everything is impacted by the fact that we are that treasured possession that god yeah. is our god and and so and impacted by his character as well like all the kind of um, the cancelling debts it's giving generously because god blesses you he blesses you so bless those yeah. around you like remember your servants before you like treat them well um like we're seeing more and more of the lord's character in these laws aren't we which is beautiful and then that kind of leads us on to 16 17 and 18 tell us like tell us what you've seen in those chapters Christy. so we have this this big kind of remembering going on don't we and so in chapter 16 we have all the all the festivals and 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 we have this idea that um well, the, the other thing that's mentioned again and again is rejoicing. So, mm. so remember who you are. Remember who God is. Remember what God has done. Worship Him, and rejoice in that in God's blessing that has been given to you, and and in that as well. Because of that, then get rid of any other sort of worship. And in these three chapters, four chapters, we have um, not only the people, but also the King is to be remembering and to be in the word and to be seeking to live the same to revere and to be obedient and to hold fast in the same way and then we get on to in the chapter 18 there um this this idea of the prophet this idea that god is is going to keep speaking to his people through his word through these messengers that are going to come again and again and but if you take a step back from it all you do get this sort of shadow of jesus don't you because we're talking mm. about the passover we're talking about God speaking to his people through his way. We're talking about the ultimate prophet, the ultimate king. While I don't think that is the kind of the main point of these individual chapters, I think if you put the whole thing together, you get this kind of nudge to look towards the Lord Jesus 
as uh, yeah I don't think it's just a nudge though I don't like I mean I think it's a shining light <laughs> fair enough like, fair enough I think you're right judge you're right. <laughs> prophet priest king sacrifice like you can't I don't think you can read these chapters without going wow Jesus is the ultimate of all of those and I think we're in line with what Nancy was saying like why wouldn't we go there why wouldn't we glory in how Jesus fulfills all of these things that they've been commanded to do he is every part he is every part of all of those things and more and I so I think yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Actually, that is that is a nudge was a, a, an understatement. <laughs> an under, I, I I regret having said the word nudge. <laughs> I should have said a giant big signpost towards Jesus. I think I think I have. I just I think as I just want us to see as well that the distinctiveness of mm. God's character comes through before we get to Jesus. Like like yeah, yeah, the way in sure. which these people are living is distinctively reflecting God's character. And like what you said about the the money and the like um cancelling the debts and things, it's just just a jewel of God's character, mm. isn't it? The compassion and the kindness there is just so yeah. evident. But I guess then we, you know, um thinking about what Nancy was saying to us last week, then we then we start to think about Jesus fulfilling this in his character and how he lived this out um in all of his life being a living sacrifice like worship and like, like that the, the kind of romans chapter 12 has really kind of keep um has kept coming back to me um as i've been reading this let me just read it for us in view of god's mercy offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and pleasing to god this is your true and proper worship do not conform to the pattern of this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and i think i was just really struck like you know, Roman, Re, Paul kind of follows this pattern in Romans where the whole rest of his book after chapter 12 is, you know, use your bodies to worship in every part of life. Every part of life is worship, isn't it? And I think what we're starting to see here is that that comes from here. Yeah. <laughs> like that has its roots in here, doesn't it? That actually you've been given everything in the Lord in view of his mercy, in view of his extraordinary grace. Every part of your life is a, a joyful living in worship to him. Yeah. And I think that's where my heart has been really hit this week, actually, has been actually um, as I've seen the dominance of worship and therefore the, the, the big picture of who God is, that he's worthy of all this worship and therefore of the obedience. Do I have a big enough view of God that I want to be worshipping him with my whole life? And, and mm-hmm. the the degree to which, you know, how can we apply these laws to ourselves? That's a kind of a point of debate. We don't have time to kind of really go into that. But what I think is really evident is God's word does apply to all of my life. And do I have a big enough picture of God to allow him to have a say over every corner of, of my life? And that's that's been really challenging to me. It's encouraging because of God's character and his rescue and who he is and Jesus and just all of the the realities of who I am in him. But then there's also just the challenge, isn't there? Like, okay, am I really like worshiping wholeheartedly in this way? But I think that's where we then come back to what Nancy was saying last week and going, well, actually, if we see him as Christ as the ultimate judge, the ultimate priest, king and sacrifice, that gives us the freedom and it gives us the safety to afford us to ask that question with honesty and vulnerability because he's taken the penalty because he judges us on judges us on the basis of his righteousness not ours because he is the perfect priest to mediate for us and just i think it just seeing that then helps us to be able to ask okay what areas of my life am i holding back from worshiping here yeah i think that's really true i've actually um just been back in sort of psalm 119 a bit recently and and that's just been a helpful kind of like the way in which the psalmist asks for help to allow that to happen mm. i think that's been a real sort of changing the way i, I like I, let me pray about this like <laughs> i'm gonna pray yeah. that god would help me to yeah that's nice yeah. do it pray okay, for us now <laughs> Father, we praise you so much that you give us your word. Thank you that you're a God who speaks into our lives, that you're a God who's worthy of all our worship, of our wholehearted love, and that in that we stand in Jesus, that we as rescued people are safe and secure. We pray that from that point that you'd um, search our hearts and help us to to live out this beautiful life that's presented here. Father, we ask that you'd... um, yeah, give us the humility to to see you rightly, to see ourselves rightly. And we pray that by your grace, you'd help us to um, walk in obedience for your glory. Amen.
Amen. Oh, Thank you, Fisty. Oh, I've enjoyed this. And I'm, do you know, I am actually really looking forward to the next lot, even though it's going to be quite hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's where we pray, don't we? We keep praying for the Lord to give us that spirit of wisdom and revelation that we may know him better through what we're reading. Um, thank you for tuning in everyone do check out our website two sisters and a cup of tea.com for further resources on deuteronomy and we look forward to seeing you next time absolutely see you then we're so grateful to ten of those and kaleidoscope for sponsoring this episode